My next nice guest tonight is an actor who has a background in law and since becoming a professional actor in 2002, he has appeared on television and film and has been recognized through the numerous awards that he has received so far. The popular Rajesh Kumar of Isidingo fame is with me tonight. You see, this job, that's uh, part of the benefit you get, that you meet the stars. <laughs> Jack Devnarian. Thank you. Much Thank appreciated, you, my friend. And thanks for coming around to pay us a visit. It's a pleasure, first time I'm here. Yes. And uh, I hope this will be the start of a long relationship. Most definitely, <laughs> it has to be, you see. And we love people like you, because you've got so many fans and people want to hear a bit more about you. But on top of that, is the inspirational stories that you tell us, you see. Because once you attain celebrity status, everybody thinks it's easy, it's walk in the park. But a lot of hard work goes into getting to where you are. That's right. And in fact, I, I choose to keep myself in that place where the hard work defines my daily life. Yes. And I've always resisted this idea of, of being a celebrity. Yeah. But how do you do that? When people conclude you are a celebrity and you say, I resist being a celebrity. It's interesting that when they say that, they've already made a decision in their mind that this person is inaccessible and unavailable. Yes, yes. So there is an association, in my view, of being a celebrity and being uninvolved, refusing to commit, unattached, and not being able to connect. And, I, and for that reason, I've decided to make myself accessible. I explain my work, my life. I connect with people, real people, yes. who have real issues. And I love the fact that in South Africa, we are accessible. Mm. That's an advantage. I, I don't understand those celebrities who refuse to be accessible. It, wait, wait, there's, no, there's, no, there's no part of Joburg, for instance, which has been set aside where they say, that's celebrityville, right? You've got Absolutely. to live in the same neighborhoods as uh, everybody else. Except you see, you'll see those people who want to be celebrities because they'll be walking in the malls with their sunglasses on. Oh, okay. Yes, and yes. that's when you know, oh, okay, how this person not to be approached. They're <laughs> okay. wearing their sunglasses yes. indoors. Yeah, yeah, be yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, don't, <laughs> I get it. But anyway, I find this, uh, I'm going to talk about your main work in a moment, but uh, you studied law and you also worked in the police services for some time. That, that's right. You know, it's very, not unusual, but rare that mm. uh, somebody would study law, go fire the police services before coming into acting. It's a very interesting route you take. I think it was always a mix from the very beginning yeah. because I had a passion for performance and I nurtured it even while I was at university, okay. at school as well. And you know, also this is something that I, I tell a lot of young people coming through the system. Mm. You have to study the craft. Yes. You have to nurture your passion. So yes. go and learn performance at school level and find some way after school as well. And I had kept it going. At that stage, though, Brad Tim, you must remember, this is now in the late 80s. Yeah. There was no realistic possibility of a man of color like myself mm. to consider a career as a performer. Mm. If you were going to do that, you were probably going to be wasting your parents' money. So I had to take a very sober and a very rational approach and say, well, I love the law. I love what it means. And I love how it needs to change in this country still now back in the late 80s and mm. early 90s. Mm. And I thought, I'm going to apply myself to legal studies. And having taken that route, I discovered very quickly, oh, the student loan is going to pull me down. Yeah, I need yeah. to find work. Yes. But I'm also a very physical kind of guy, and I yeah. love meeting people and interacting with them. Law enforcement became a logical step. Yeah. And it was an interesting time back in 1994 when I joined the police back then. Um, it was a time of change. Mm. And it felt amazing to call myself um, a public servant. Because for the first time, you had departments like the police that was meant to serve. And that's what, it was another interesting transition that was taking place. But through all of that, I maintained performance. Mm -hmm. So after nine years of uh, building a career as a policeman, it was a matter of timing and the stars aligned for me, and it, the, the opportunity came up. And I thought, well, I've paid my dues, and now it's time for me to change my life. Now, very popular television series, Isidingo. It's been going on for how long? For 18 years now, right? right. Well, it tells you something about the producers, the writers, and the actors on yeah. the show for it to be sustained this long, right? What, what do you think is the magic of uh, Isidingo that's made it... Sub survive, if I may use the word, this yes. long, or be sustained this long? 
I think it's the, um, it's formula. The way Isidingo is defined is not that it's a soapy. It, it would be unfair to describe Isidingo as a soapy. I think that would be limiting it. Um, Isidingo should more appropriately be described as a daily drama mm. because our storylines try to capture those very difficult conflicts that we have as South African people so that we're not going to just gloss over a story of, of real human pain and capture it in a soapy formula. Mm. We're going to go into those dark places and we're going to ask the hard questions and we're going to ask our audience to come with us as we confront these difficult questions. And we're giving it to them in the same time slot as, you know, just around soapy time. Sure. And, and you've been with, uh, with, uh, with Isidingo for how long now? 14 years? 14 years, that's right. 14 years. That's it's changed my going, life. Still going, changed your life? Yes, I get to wear sunglasses as I walk through a shopping center. <laughs> <laughs> but how's the experience been like? I mean, working with the crew, the team and the whole production process. It's been humbling. It has been because I have, you know, in, in the course of my career, I've, I've learned to understand a little bit about what each person uh, is able to contribute and the range of skills that it takes, even as we look around studio now. Mm. There's so many people contributing mm. just so that this picture mm. can be seen mm. by our audience right now. And that process demands respect. And uh, I, I watch in awe of the combination of the logistical, the business, the technical, the performance and creative, and all these things come together yes. just to make this production create the happen. magic that makes people be glued to their TV sets every afternoon. Absolutely. It's a dingo they need. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, but uh, in terms of the conflation between yourself as a human being, a person, and your character in Is It Dingo, I suppose people confuse the two many times. Often that is the case. Yeah. I, I try to, to keep my, my character separate because um, this, this is something that I've had to create and build over years. Yeah. So, of course, I own th that, that being and I keep him as separate because when he is in, on TV and when, I'm, when I'm, I'm, I'm performing as this character, he's got to be making separate choices and they've got to be as instinctive and personal to him. Mm as mine are to me. Mm, mm. So I allow that character to use this vehicle, but he's got to be another person. Except, of course, when the ladies you know, are really excited about Rajesh, then of course I'm that guy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, you know, I mean, ladies probably find Rajesh more interesting than Jack. Because Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they seem to be a lot more attracted to Rajesh. So I'm Raj, man. <laughs> <laughs> Raj will take you places. <laughs> but any other work, uh, you know, because sometimes doing, being a character for this long can stereotype you, isn't it? When you have, yeah. have to cast for roles and people see you in, in a one-dimensional sense. Very much. And that's, uh, I suppose, you know, the, that, that phrase about, you know, what you lose on the swings, you gain on the roundabouts. Yeah. I'm very, very fortunate that being on a vehicle as large and as popular as Isidingo means that I, I get to, to pick and choose the work that I love to do. Yeah. And of course, I miss out on huge opportunities as well. Um, and with regret, I let those go, but I, I'm reassured always that what I have on Isidingo is something that I treasure. It's built my career. And it, it, it's an opportunity also to be able to tell the stories that remind South African people what we are meant to do, mm. how we are meant to grow, how we are supposed to prosper. And we, if, if we look very carefully at these stories in the soapies, you'll get to see that we are actually all rooting for the same things. Mm. Mm. We all want each other to, to be sustained, to prosper, to improve themselves, we all want that for everybody. We subscribe to a similar set of values, whether we are aware of it or not, right? And irrespective of maybe cultural and racial backgrounds for that that's matter. That's right, that's right. And that, that kind of diversity we're supposed to celebrate. Yes. And so I see that as, as my duty, being on a show, popular show, important character. So there's a lot still to be achieved. Well, I think what we must say and should say to you and your colleagues on Isi Dingo is well done for you to have sustained it up to this time. I had somebody make a joke and say, I'm, not, I'm on my fifth wife now or my fifth husband now since I started 
watching Isi Dingo. <laughs> so <laughs> if you don't like if you don't like Isi Dingo, then you move out. Then we go for the next one. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll much, keep watching. Uh, much appreciated, uh, Jack Davnarin. Thank you. Thanks again me. for having been our guest. Isi Dingo, the need. Now you've got a background to what makes the people on the show come alive. And uh, of course, you know, if you prefer Raj, you'll get Raj. From us, good night to you.